Since 2013, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force has recommended using annual low-dose chest CT, or LDCT, to screen for lung cancer in high-risk adults, who are currently defined as adults aged 50 to 80 years, who have a 20-pack year smoking history, and currently smoke or have quit within the last 15 years. Since an LDCT captures not only lung nodules and masses, but all of their surrounding anatomy, it's pretty common to encounter incidental findings unrelated to lung cancer on a lung cancer screening study. Some incidental findings are non-actionable, and some are significant. According to the American College of Radiology's Nationwide Lung Cancer Screening Registry, one out of every five incidental findings is significant. And the ones that are new or not previously documented will usually be actionable. Significant incidental findings have been reported to occur in 8 to 45% of lung cancer screening studies and may occur even more frequently than 45% based on anecdotal reports when you're going by the book. And the book we're alluding to is the American College of Radiology's LungRAD system. LungRAD standardizes the interpretation, reporting, and management of lung nodules discovered on lung cancer screening CT studies. In this system, lung nodules are categorized into sequential buckets of lung cancer suspicion on a numerical scale, with standard management recommendations tied to each individual bucket. LungRADS also has an affordance for handling actionable incidental findings. When an actionable incidental finding unrelated to lung cancer is present, an S modifier suffix is appended to the LungRADS category score. The LungRADS guidelines also itemize which common incidental findings are non-actionable and which are significant, with standard management recommendations assigned to significant ones. These guidelines are published in a two-page guide from the ACR that looks like this. And if you peek at any section, you'll see how LungRADS itemizes certain objective incidental imaging findings as okay and non-actionable, and certain imaging findings as significant with a standard management recommendation for their workup. I'd like to use the next three minutes to walk you through what LungRAD says about incidental findings in six different regions of the chest, starting with the lungs and pleura. In the lungs and pleura, subsegmental atelectasis is defined by LungRADs as non-actionable, while bronchiectasis, new pleural disease, cystic lung disease, fibrotic ILD, ground glass lung opacities, and diffuse nodular lung disease may be actionable. On this table, the standard LungRADS management recommendations assigned to each actionable incidental finding appear in the right column. In the cardiovascular system, small pericardial effusions, ectatic thoracic aortas, aortic mural calcification, ascending aortas under 42 millimeters diameter, and main pulmonary arteries under 31 millimeters diameter are defined as non-actionable, while coronary artery calcification of any severity, pericardial effusions that are moderate or larger, aortic valve calcification of at least moderate amount, ascending aortas 42 millimeters diameter and above, and main pulmonary arteries 31 millimeters diameter and above may be actionable. In the mediastinum, lymph nodes under 15 mm short axis and simple mediastinal cysts are defined as non-actionable, while large hiatal hernias, dilated esophaguses, focal esophageal wall thickening or mass, lymph nodes of at least 15 mm short axis diameter with no explainable cause, and solid or mixed solid mediastinal masses may be actionable. In the lower neck, thyroid nodules under 15 millimeters are defined as non-actionable, while thyroid nodules 15 millimeters and above, thyroid nodules with suspicious features, and suspected goiters may be actionable. 
in the upper abdomen, a moderately long list of adrenal, kidney, liver, and pancreatic incidental findings are defined as non-actionable, while hepatic steatosis, cirrhosis, liver lesions one centimeters and above, adrenal nodules that are above 10 Hounsfield units in attenuation, one centimeter, or have been growing, renal masses of soft tissue or mixed density, and pancreatic system masses may be actionable. And finally, in the chest wall, coarse breast calcifications, breast cysts with no solid component, and degenerative disc disease are defined as non-actionable, while osteopenia, osteoporosis, and breast nodules masses and asymmetric densities may be actionable. While the uptake and implementation of the lung nodule part of the lung rats workflow, whose framework was first established back in 2014, is pretty uniform across the country, there's a bit less consensus when it comes to the implementation of the incidental findings part of this workflow, whose framework hadn't really been fleshed out until very recently. And some unsettled issues about their implementation currently exist amongst many radiologists and other stakeholders. Differences in opinion exist with regards to the thresholds between what's non-actionable versus what's significant, and also about some of the standard management recommendations. Not everyone's in agreement about the thresholds for coronary artery calcification and thoracic aortic diameter, for example, or blanket recommendations like PCP evaluation. Differences in opinion exist regarding reporting practices. Should all significant incidental findings or only actionable significant incidental findings be itemized in the impression? Does an explicit recommendation need to be documented for every actionable incidental finding? And should the S suffix really signify the presence of any significant incidental finding? or the presence of an actionable incidental finding, or the presence of an explicit recommendation for an actionable incidental finding in a lung cancer screening report. Concerns exist regarding the clinical workflow too. When a radiologist is reading a non-baseline lung cancer screening CT, it's not always readily apparent whether a significant incidental finding has already been addressed by a patient's PCP and therefore no longer actionable. And there are questions about what's the value of the S modifier and explicit management recommendations for an incidental finding that's already known to be present in an overwhelming percentage of a particular patient population. 